Hey guys, uh, I'm Viper and welcome to my 300 subscriber q and I know it's been a long time since I've done all these face-to-face -face sort of things um, but I thought I'd do it for the Q&A. Uh, we're going to start with some Twitter questions so I'll just bring them up. I've got one already loaded here on my iPad so I'm going to use these to read all the questions on. First one comes in from at table Matt, or Matt, and he says, What plans do you have for the future, both YouTube and IRL, so in real life? Plans for YouTube? I don't know. It's kind of all I'm not sure about it. It's just trying to make the best of a bad situation. I wouldn't say I'm in a bad situation at the moment, but I feel as though with being at a low sort of subscriber rate compared to others, I feel as though if I grow a bit more, then maybe things will get better. I don't know. That sort of thing, but... I'd say YouTube's going okay, let's just put it that way, I'll say in short, YouTube's going alright. Um, but we're, since, at the moment, as recording this, I'm currently 364, so... Since I posted my Q&A announcement, which was about two months ago now, we've gained 64 new subscribers, so for everyone new who's subscribed, hello! I'm Viper, hello. Um, but, uh, that sort of thing, it's been quite astonishing that I've grown quite a bit in two months because I don't usually gain that many. I gained quite a lot of you guys from a rant video that I did about the community and stuff so yeah um, to everyone who subscribed because of that thank you and welcome aboard. Uh, next set of questions actually comes in from a friend of mine through direct message um, and he asked me a couple I'll try and list them on the screen if I can. He says overstay or understay that would probably be overstay because I Understood. Favourite game? I don't even know, I think I've got it. Yeah, it probably would have to be this, I'm sorry, but it's that. You guys can see that. Yeah, I'm sorry. It is. Um, what do you think of Dirt Rally? From what I've played, it's pretty good. Um, I'm not exactly used to the whole handling thing. I mean, I've had it for months, but I'm, not, I'm still not used to the handling um, model on it. But... For what it for the game, it, the graphics looks visually stunning. It's the same as F1, really. I mean, I'm not used to that handling model as much, but yeah, uh, Dirt Rally. I think the graphics look amazing, and the controls are a bit hard to get used to. But if you're on a wheel, I guess that's a bit easier. I have tried on a wheel, believe me, but no, just not for me. But it's still good. Um, have you ever done any real life racing? I mean, if go karting counts, then yeah, I've done go karting on several occasions. Um, but I went to a karting place in Newquay about, I think it's seven years ago now. Um, and they were doing like a go karting thing, and I was just like, oh, it was like, I think five or six quid to do it. And it was like, I think 20 laps around some figure of eight circuit where you went over a bridge, then you went under it when you came round. Um, and I won the race, I think, by, well, I think, 10 seconds or something. And they give me, the basic said, oh, I was like, well, where are you going? I was like, I don't know, where am I going? <laughs> He said, you need to go over there because you get an award. And I was like, oh, do I? And uh, they give me a, a karting medal. It's got like a go-kart on it. One second. <laughs> right, so you can't, probably can't see that, but that's it there. It's got a, whatever you're calling, but that's it there. It's got a, what the karting circuit was on the back. Can't, <laughs> sorry, it's get, probably getting annoying my face, but there's a number there <laughs> if you want, I just want to book it. it? Although if you can't read it, it says Saint Evolve Karting Circuit, so that's what it is. Um, right, so those are the Twitter questions. Now for the YouTube ones. Okay, right, so now I'm on the YouTube video and I can actually see what's going on. I, I think my, race look, my face looks a bit redder in the camera, I don't know. It might be because of the video, maybe, I'm not sure. Right, so a couple of questions. First message comes from Cal, who, Cal HD1, who said, uh, congrats mate. So, thanks, Cole. Um, but the actual first question that I've got is um, from Nidge Plays, and he asks, Congrats on 350 now, mate. So, you know, thanks. Uh, and my question is, what would your ultimate F1 team be? You can have any team principal, any car, and any two drivers throughout F1 history. Um, I think I did this a while ago. If I had to pick a team... Like, if I create my ultimate F1 team, I'd have Juan Pablo Montoya and who was the other guy? There was somebody else, I think it was, there was Juan Pablo, oh, yeah, Juan Pablo Montoya and Mika Hakkinen as my drivers. Um, the Renault R25, so 2005 Renault F1 team car, I'd have that as my car. And Flavio Briatore, I think it was, which was that year's manager as well, 
Valve Hill as my team manager. Yeah, those are my that's my ultimate F1 team. So thanks for that, Nitch. Next question comes in from a big fan of mine, and he's also been my good friend for a few years. Uh, Raskerman, well, I'll say a few years, but two years, I think. Uh, Raskerman, double four, double four, and he asks, uh, he says, this is the first time I've ever used hashtag properly, at least. He says, okay, so the question, could you make a Project Cars Championship on PC? That would be, an, be awesome because I might, I could join in and I think I could get some more people in as well, just a thought. A Project Cars Championship on PC, well there's quite a lot on the PC as it stands, I think, I'm not sure. I think AOR are doing one as well, which is GT3, but I believe that's Xbox One. I don't know. But, um, I'm not sure about Project Cars Championship. I know you guys would probably want to see it, but from my personal point of view, I like Project Cars just to play in my spare time, I don't play it constantly and I'm not one of those people that will play it quite a bit just to do league races on it. I could make a quick one, like it would last for about a week, not a week, two or three weeks where we do like a three race championship or something and the, each, car, each week it would be different um, car classes so we could probably just do Formula C, I mean it's the form of being Formula A as the last week. Um, obviously different tracks, not the same one because then it get too easy. Um, and maybe that could work, I don't know. I mean that would be considered the championship, wouldn't it? Three races I guess, but maybe, yeah. Thanks for the question Rask uh, Raskman, yeah. Next one comes in from Stato and he says, What was the first F1 Grand Prix you watched? What other motor racing series are you interested in? First F1 Grand Prix I watched, first full race that I watched, was probably the 2012 Brazilian Grand Prix. I did watch races before that, like the 2006 Hungarian Grand Prix when Button won. There was one in 2002, I believe, which was at Emola. Basically, my granddad was really into um, F1 back when I was younger, and he always used to come up on like Sundays or something and say to my dad to turn TV on just so he could watch F1. And I never really got into it, not until I think it was 2000, because my mate Josh brought up 2010, F1 2010, F1 2011 up. And I played both, and I really hated the games because I wasn't used to handling. And then there was something about the 2012 F1 game that I saw interesting. I don't know if it was the developer diaries or something that got me interested. Um, but something like that. And I was like, oh, that looks really good. And I played the demo, and I actually got into F1 3 of the game. So. Weird, uh, weird answer I know, but you know, that sort of thing. So, as for other, what other, mo other motor race series I'm interested in? Probably would be none, because I used to be in rallying, into rallying, back when um, Cole McRae used to be in it, of course, and I used to be, I used to love it, and I used to play F1, uh, used to play obviously the old rally games and stuff, but I, I watched it on regular occasions, but then just stopped watching for no reason. I think it was because when McRae left in 2004, I think it was, or four. I just stopped watching it. I, to be fair, I don't think I watched much of it, but you know, I did used to watch it when it was in it. I still, I do watch it every now and again, like re not regularly, but rarely on the TV. If I, I can't evolve and there's nothing interesting to watch, then I'll just put WRC on and watch that. So I'm not really interested in sort of thing. IndyCar doesn't take my fancy either because I find it a bit boring. Uh, same with NASCAR, I'm not into that. I'm not into the moto stuff, neither, you know, motorbikes, I'm not. I'm a cars person, but in terms of motor racing series, I'm not entirely sure, really. I just only watch F1 as it stands for the past two or three years. Hope that answers your question. Next one comes in from JSPF1 underscore 10 or space 10 as his uh, username is. And this is a good friend of mine I've known for the past few weeks, a uh, few months even. Um, and he says, if you could pick any team, mate, who would it be and why? In terms of team, I think he means F1 team, of course. So, if I could pick any F1 team, it would have to be the Mild 7 Rail F1 team. The reason being is just, I love the colour scheme that they used on my car. It would I, well, actually, there's actually three teams that I'd pick. There's either Arrows F1, which I'm wearing now, the car. There's Jaguar F1, so the old Jaguar team. And there's also obviously a mild 7 in front of the F1 team with uh, 2005, 06, whatever it was, the dominance with Alonso and Renault of course. I don't know, um, I really couldn't pick one, I'd have to pick all three, but if I had to pick one, I'd have to pick mild 7, I just love the colour scheme of that car. Um, so thanks for the question. Next one comes in from Velocity, or Mac Shepard I think it is, I think it's Mac, 
Mark. It's definitely, yeah, Mark is. Uh, and he's got three questions. And the first one is, favourite R Factor mod? There's so many good mods on R Factor, I really can't decide. It would have to be an F1 mod, unfortunately. Probably be the 2001 F1 mod. I know I'm going back some years with that mod, but... It's just the fact that, that you've got Benetton in there, you've got Arrows, it's Jordan, Jaguar's in there, Minardi I think is in there as well. It's just, there's so many old and classic teams in there, Williams, you know, BMW Williams, Ferrari of course, um, what was the other, Toyota I think might have been in there, I'm not sure. But there were so many good teams in that year and it, the, that, I think, apart from I think 2004 or 05, it was probably the last, oh, even 06 even. That was the last time when F1 was really colourful and it was like 9 or 10 different teams that had different colours, so. But yeah, the, the F1 2001 mod for me. Next one is, favourite year of F1? Considering I've only watched the end of 2012, 2013, 2014 and obviously up until uh, currently this year's, I have been back, I have watched 04, 07, oh wait, I was looking at the reviews. 04, 07, 08, 09 and 14, obviously that's how I watched 14, but out of all the years that I've watched, oh and 96, I, even though I wasn't even born in 96, obviously that was the one Damon Hill won, but I watched that one, I actually bought the VHS, I haven't got it with me, but yeah I bought that. Um, but my favourite year from what I've seen, favourite year I've won in my opinion, was probably, and I'd have to be, unfortunately, Unfortunately, um, I'm going to have to be biased, guys, but um, last year, not because of the fact that it was Hamilton 1, but the fact that it was it was weird to see um, Vettel not winning any races. It was nice to see that Ricardo won races. And it was one of those things that we had four years of dominance from Vettel, near enough, um, because he just obviously dominated 2011 and 2013, but there was a fight in 2012 and a fight in 2010. But the fact that he, he won four years in a row, it was nice that somebody else was able to get the big trophy, you know, that another team would get the different trophy, and somebody would, another team would come out on top. Obviously this year things are completely different, Vettel's won two races as of now. Um, I think Rosberg's won three or two, and Hamilton's won the rest, as far as I know. But I'd say last year was a good one, in my opinion, but obviously 2012 was that one where they had seven different winners in the first seven races and all that. I actually got the review of that and I bought it recently and I've watched it and not all of it but I've watched like the first quarter of the season when the first seven winners were going through and I thought oh it's pretty interesting but not that great in my opinion. Sorry to everyone I have offended because everyone goes that's the best season. I'm sorry but not in my opinion it's not. And last question from Mac. Uh, in your opinion who are, your, who are the top five racing slash F1 YouTubers? This, again, is a hard one. I'm not actually going to say, for once, unlike most people, I'm not going to mention any of the big names. Okay, I'll mention Harrison. Harrison's one of them. Because he's very opinionated, and I have to admit, he's quite honest, and if he needs to be brass, he needs to be. You know, if he needs to be bold and say something, then he will speak up and he will say it. If something big happens, he will get a say on it, somehow, you know, like it for a video or something. But if you listen to what he's saying, his word, I say his words are wise, they are, they do sound wise to me. It's like somebody's rubbed off, you know, a part of the, you know, when the, oh, what is it, like, uh, old man's knowledge and they rub off and, you know, how old men talk and stuff. I'm not calling Dre an old man or anything, I'm just saying that he's got some of that, you know, that knowledge that makes him sound um, smart and likeable, and he is. He's a nice guy, so he'd be one of my top five. I can't put him in order, unfortunately, so Harrison 101 is one. Velocity, the guy who asked this, so Mac, he's also another one. I'm gonna be bold, but I'm gonna say um, F1 Games PlayStation, who's also asked some questions as well, I'll get around to them in a minute. He's, or Dave as he's known, he's quite a, um, a funny guy and everything. He's starting to grow slowly. Uh, speaking of that, onto my next one is PS Loot and Rules as well. He's also a guy that I find entertaining. He does an F1 Manager series, which I think is quite cool and quite good. Um, and last but not least, and this is really difficult to pick, um, I'm going to go with Flying the Rangatang. Now even though he does quite a bit of FIFA content, his F1 content is brilliant. He's funny as anything, I'll just say that. He's funny as anything, his editing's on, on, on point, like literally on point. Um, he's riled there with however in my opinion and you know, guys like that. So 
Um, he's, a, he's a great hater and a great friend and stuff. I don't speak to him that much anymore like I used to, but we're still good friends and um, it's, he's, he's a cracking guy to talk to and he's really funny as well. Thanks for the question. Uh, moving on to the next set, which is, as I said, F1 Games PlayStation. This is a bit long, so forgive me. Xbox One, Tumbleweed, slowly uh, tumbles past the screen. Basically, a Tumbleweed rolls past. So they'll try to make some sense in this question, but it's very difficult for me. Nicky Lauda says F1 is running out of time to fix itself. As this comes from the great man himself, is this now a clear indication that however far-fetched and unrealistic that it sounds, could F1 actually implode in on itself and come to an end? Is it running out of time to fix itself? The answer is kind of yes and no. If F1 fans are finding it boring, then that's fair enough, because obviously they're the guys that try to drive the sport forwards, but if they find it boring, that means the FIA need to step up their game, in my opinion, um, and allow better engines and stuff. I'm not saying go to V8 or V10s like we had before, but at least make the sport a bit more cheaper. I mean, we've had like, what is it, two, three teams drop out now? We had Manu who managed to come back under their own strength, thankfully. But look at where they were this time last year. I mean, there was Kvyrum going up for sale, Marussia was starting to go into administration almost until I think it was America when they finally did. But everything's changed from last year to this year and I have to say if FIA want to get F1, keep F1 running as a whole, then they better you know, change around like the costs and then of engines and stuff because otherwise the engine, not the engine, the sport itself will go dead. Doesn't matter how many people are watching, there'll be less people that'll tune in just to watch a race. I've no problems with these tur this turbo era stuff that's going on, you know, the V6 turbos. I've no problem with that, I can get used to that. I know a lot of people still complain, going, oh, it's crap, it's not as loud as V8s. So what? You know, if it provides good racing, whatever. If there's cars on the track, I'm happy. But the fact that these teams are going down and all that stuff, no, 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 I'll just draw the line there. It's just the fact that that's happening and I'm not going to go there. So yeah, it could implode on itself if it's not careful and the FIA don't do something good about it. And he also goes on to mention, he says, I've followed F1 since the late 80s and it's been up and down, but never to this point, I also feel that getting more and more into pay TV is not the answer. This should be free for everyone, not just the metal classes. I also feel Sky TV, with its business suits and corporate bullshit, is ruining the sport contributing to what may be its ultimate demise. Anyway, enough of that stupid question. Uh, anyway, uh, but I can't speak. Anyway, enough of that. Stupid question time. If you had 1,000 subscri subscribers, would you be A, happy, B, very happy, or C, oh my god, I just want a BAFTA happy. If I had 1,000 subscribers, I would probably be happy. How happy though? But actually, I thought I'd probably be so very happy. I wouldn't be baffed, I'd be like, oh my god, like that sort of thing, but I would be happy, I would be very, very happy, so, yeah. He does actually answer, he's, he has asked me a few more questions, but unfortunately, thanks to my iPod, I can't read them. I will come back to you though, Dave, don't worry about it, that's his name, I will come back to him. Moving on to the next one, comes from Lewis Central, and he asks, what slash who made you start YouTube? What made me start YouTube was probably a friend of mine, um, I haven't spoken to him in years, but... Basically, when I was at secondary school, I used to watch the Syndicate Project. You guys probably will know him. Basically, I watched his videos when I was in, I think it was like year 9 or year 10. And I, was, I wasn't I was inspired by them, I wouldn't say. I just said that I, I, would, I was watching his content, you know, his zombie stuff. And I said, well, why didn't you give it a try? So I got my laptop, turned it towards the screen, and that's how I used to do it. Um, if you go back to my channel and click on like the oldest video, you'll find that's basically that was my first actual video. I've not deleted or deleted any of my old videos. They're still there. If you guys want to go and watch them, they are still there for you guys to watch. But I remember having I uh, didn't have any of the Elgato stuff that I have or my camera that I've got now. I used to have a laptop. Um, I still do, but it's just a family laptop now. Um, it had a two megapixel camera on it, which was really crap. And all I used to do was used to get a laptop turn it around so the camera would face towards the screen, the TV screen, and then I'd used to start playing the game and then used to stop recording on it, and that was how I recorded videos. I think I recorded like 10 within 3 weeks or something, which was kind of weird. Most people started picking up on it, and of course I eventually got picked on just for doing something that I'd like to do um, at school, so there was that. 
Um, but yeah, uh, it was my friend Sam, I think he's called. It was him who made me start YouTube. So yeah, hope I answered your question, Lewis. <laughs> uh, next one comes from Shawnee R38. Now this guy is from UTR Legends. He's, um, Rhino9802, he was actually in CBC Racing League as well, all those years ago, two, three years ago when he used to do those highlights. His questions, he asked three, he says, best moment from BPRL Season 3.5, no doubt about it, it's got to be Canada when I've won, because I was pretty damn happy with that. I have to admit, racing against Reese, who was, I, I think it's IX Reversal or something he's called, but I Reversal, he was impossible to beat on some of the races and I could never get, get catch up to him. And it just so happened that in the way he seemed to struggle, and I, I did not struggle what, whatsoever. And the guys who were in front of me I had much better pace than I think, because I was able to catch up to them. And then, like with four laps or five laps to go, should I say, um, I ended up catching the guys up, passing them, and then that was it. I, I caught them up, I passed them and took the win and um, yeah very happy about that next one is best moment from utr legends this is tricky because there was quite a few good moments my probably favorite moment and it's a bit unfortunate i have to say this sean i don't want to disappoint you but it would probably have to be a portugal where i think it was aaron messed up he went in the pits he came out and i went in the lap after and as he was coming around the first corner, he slipped out, like he hit, put a wheel on the gravel and he spun, you'll see it from the highlights. He basically put a wheel and he spun to his sideways like that. And I went round his outside to take the lead. At that point, I thought the wind was in the bag. With about three or four laps re remaining, he caught right up to the back of me and he was within like half a second. I couldn't shake him off. I managed to extend the gap with two laps remaining on the last lap. He closed the gap. And we came across the line, I believe the gap between me and Aaron was at less than a tenth of a second, so he really, really fought hard that race. Even though he messed up, he still did quite a good job to you know, pull it back and challenge me for the win, so I was really good at film my favourite moment ever from UTR Legends. That and probably win the title, which I believe was in Brazil, I'm not sure actually. I think it was either Germany or something. I won the championship like with four rounds to go, so I was pretty happy with that. And the last question they ask is, most talented Irish driver you've ever raced with? I wonder who I could say for this one. I'd have to be Ryan on night here or two. Yeah, it would. Sorry, Sean. Oh wait, that's you, isn't it? <laughs> I got you on it. Yeah, um, yeah, it would have to be Ryan because I don't know. Sorry, Sean. Um, it would have to be Sean because I don't know any other Irish drivers. I know, actually know Lewis is an Irish driver, but, and also, I think it's Ryan Plays or Chocorolo 88 or something, I think it is. Um, he's an Irish driver as well, I think. But as for, in terms of actual people I've raced with, it's got to be shown because I've raced them more times than anybody else with, in terms of Irishness. Irish people, I don't know, yeah. Sean. <laughs> I got a congrats bud from uh, Giant Bacon, so thanks very much guy, uh, thanks very much dude. Warrior X has said, do you have any tips on beginning a YouTube channel and do you have any tips for doing commentary? Tips for beginning the YouTube channel, I'm not usually one to ask because I only have 364 subscribers, but I'll give it my best shot. It depends, because it depends what sort of stuff you're into. If you want to start on gaming like most people are doing nowadays, then by all means start it on gaming you don't I mean also bear this in mind you don't have to stick to gaming you can move to vlogs or whatever the thing is is that look at me I'm doing gaming videos for most of the time but then there's times like Silverstone uh, Bug Jam last year Silverstone last year as well where I was vlogging the, the event you know as I was walking around I was vlogging the whole thing kind of uh, you know bits of it so even though this channel's mainly gaming I vlog and you know make it a bit separate because I know most gaming channels just do completely gaming and that's it they do complete gaming they don't do anything else just gaming stuff um, and benchmark test I don't know but if you have gaming and vlogs on the same channel you kind of got to make sure it works so don't start doing a gaming channel and then vlogging a fashion show if you get what I mean because it just doesn't work that's two different categories you shouldn't go with Make sure whatever you're filming is relevant um, and then that way your channel kind of just blends into one another, videos blend into your channel just like that, you know, it, 
it works is what I'm saying if you do that sort of stuff and also if you are starting with gaming don't do what I did which was I started with that and I ended up going from that to F1 and other games like um, I don't know I went to COD and GTA and everything I still do GTA videos I think but I haven't done one in about a year actually but still you know Start with a game that you like to play. Don't start with one that you think, oh, I'll do that just for views, because otherwise people will get onto you and they instantly realise he's doing it for views. If you do play an old game and it gets views, then well done. Because that's not saying that you're doing it for views or anything. If you've got an old game and you love playing, like say for instance, say you like playing that. Let's just take this as an example. Say you like playing Conqueror Rally. You love playing it. It's the game that you play when you were playing as a childhood. So he was like, oh, I played it so much, like I did. I, I started filming, that was my first ever video. Um, say you were playing this constantly, or you, you liked playing it, you didn't really care. And you decided that to start YouTube channel, you make a video like that. Well, it's either a good start or a bad start. If it doesn't get too many views, don't worry about it. Views will come when need to. Um, and also in terms of what other games you should do, that's all up to you. Don't let others decide that. It's your channel and you decide what goes on it. Don't feel like you've been forced. Also, don't feel like you've been forced to. Have fun. That's what YouTube's all about. And as for any tips for doing commentary, I can't help you on this one, unfortunately, but I can give you my best advice. Start early and just carry on doing it and you'll get used to it. So basically, the start commentating as soon as you can maybe maybe write a script perhaps to help you with it and sit in front of a mic record it a few times and once you're happy with doing it do, do this every time you do commentary basically don't do it like a one-off sort of thing if you do it once over people will realize what's going on and mine's like literally my commentary is a once over if I don't like it I'll go back and do it again but most of the times I'm happy with it nine times out of ten so I don't go back or re-record stuff but if I messed up, I mispronounced something, I might actually just go back and re-record the thing, whatever I said. So, there's that. Um, and that's all I can give you in terms of commentary, so I hope that's helped. Uh, also, thanks for the question, Warrior X. And the last one is from Toxic Rex 7 Gaming, and that was, What was the first racing game you ever played? First racing game I ever played. It wasn't this. In fact... Bear with me, one minute. Right, so my first ever racing game that I ever played was this, and I've still got it now. Unfortunately, there's no cover, so... Yeah, that'll happen, but that's... That, there, there, that. <laughs> I couldn't get it on camera, that's it. That's the first game I played. I still play it now. Um, I have a PlayStation 1 emulator on my computer, and I still play that, because I've got that on there. This has been... My q and I will add in the questions for the next part. I know it sounds weird because I've like only done one of Dave's questions. He's still like, he asked me a few more. So I'm sorry about that, Dave, but I will add them in um, when I can. And yeah, that's been it. So I'll see you guys for the next video or next part. I might carry it over to another part, um, which is on to this one maybe. But we'll see. So thanks for the questions. I'll see you guys soon. Okay, so this is the bonus part, which is where I actually finished off Dave's questions. I've got my computer screen on, as you can see there. He's got the rest of his questions on. He's got quite a few, quite a few questions. So, out of his questions, I already answered this first one, which was where he says, If you had a thousand subscribers, uh, would you A, be happy, B, be very happy, or C, oh my god, I want a BAFTA happy? I said, be very happy. The second question is, is it possible we do all really live in a matrix and our whole existence is just a dream? And that would be, no, and I think you need to go and see somebody about that, Dave. Uh, question three, name one YouTuber, any genre that you would sit down and watch their videos every day. That would have to be, unfortunately, I'm sorry to say, Dave, it would probably have to be... If there's one YouTuber that I watch every day anyway, it would probably be NerdCubed, or Official NerdCube, because his content is really well edited sometimes, like he does uh, NerdCubes FW or something, which is basically fucks with, and it's really funny and everything, so that guy I could easily just watch all day. Uh, question 4. Would you like to still be doing YouTube in 10 years? Yes, definitely. 
Um, question five: What do you think about alternate alternate realities? I mean, could there be another Brad, another dimension, doing YouTube the same, but with only two subs and doing Armin videos? Well, it's quite possible. You know, we're not alone in the universe. So, dun dun dun. dun. Uh, question six: If we are the only life in the universe who came up with the original idea, some crazy guy from NASA? I do not know. That's a good question, but even I don't know the answer to that one, Dave. I'm not the wise one. And finally, question seven. Well, not really a question, more like words put together in the form of a sentence. Never again say no one ever leaves comments on your videos. Mwah. Anyway, got to go now. The kettle is boiling and the volcano where. Yeah. Just thought I'd add that bit on. <laughs> Dave's a bit of a... I say, Dave's a bit of a comedian. He asks some really weird, silly questions. But they, are, they were fun to answer, Dave. So, this is the real ending to the q and I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I've enjoyed answering your questions. And if you're new, make sure you subscribe. If you did like the video, I'll be sure hit the like button. And of course, be sure to comment down anything else that I may have missed. So, until next time... I've been vibrating. I'll see you guys in my next video. Ta-ra!